Welcome back to our transmission rebuilding series for the Polaris side-by-sides. We've got this transmission torn apart for our XP4-1000. We need to get it back together. Now, if you're not to this point on your machine, go back and watch the previous video. But with that being said, let's jump right into this. First step for assembly, we need to install the seals into the case half. So we've got this input shaft seal. We've got that step that's gonna go inside the case. We've got a bearing driver. And once you're flush all the way around, now we're gonna do the same thing on the drive shaft seal. But again, you have this little taper. So right at the bottom of the taper is where you want the edge of that seal to sit all the way around. Now we need to install the snorkel shaft. We're gonna lube these threads with either white grease or anti-seize. Now pay attention, this has some teeth right here and we've got a hole through the side of the case that goes into the snorkel housing. That's how we're gonna set our backlash. So just be aware of that. And throughout installation, you wanna lube up any rotating parts. And you just wanna make sure that's fully seated. For the pinion shaft bearing to go in, we're gonna heat this up a little bit. Then we'll take the pinion shaft and we're gonna work it in and you need to make sure the gears mesh up. Now, if you're having trouble getting that bearing to drop down in place, you need to start over, warm this back up, make sure it's plenty hot, and then this should drop in place. And as far as the retainer goes, it only goes on one way, so make sure it's lined up. Then we're gonna install these three bolts. We're gonna to torque those to 10 foot pounds, and we're also applying medium strength Loctite to them. The next step is to set your backlash, and all that is is setting the correct amount of free play between those two gears, and that way you're gonna have the correct contact pattern with them. So what we need to do, we're gonna take our punch again, and we're gonna rotate the, nor the snorkel tube counterclockwise until there's no backlash at all. You should still be able to rotate the shaft by hand, but it might feel a little rough. So I'm feeling just a little resistance. I'm gonna check that. Okay, there's absolutely no free play, but I can still spin the shaft by hand. And you can hear that it's a little rough. That's exactly what you want. Now, the hole we mentioned earlier, we're gonna stick this Allen key in there and find out where we are with those teeth that are sticking out on that snorkel tube. So we're sitting on top of a tooth. So when I put the Allen key in there, I was on one of the sides. I turned it clockwise just a little bit. The Allen key dropped in. So now we need to go clockwise three notches. So I'm on top of a tooth, drops down in. There's one notch. Two notches. That's three notches right there. I'm just gonna check the backlash. So we're feeling really good on the backlash. We have just a little bit of play and you can compare that to how it felt when you took it apart. So now we need to install our bolt. We're also applying medium strength Loctite to them. That's gonna go down into the notch. And again, we're gonna torque that to 10 foot pounds. Next, we're gonna take our input shaft, reverse shaft, and our idler shaft. We're gonna mesh the gears and we're gonna install all of those as an assembly. And you know, our seals, they did come with grease on them. It's a good idea to make sure you've got plenty of grease on there. To make sure the shafts are installed correctly, you wanna look at the bearings on the ends and make sure those bearings are fully seated into the case. I also like to rotate this input shaft and just make sure the gears are meshing correctly, which they are. Now be aware, this can't be in two gears at the same time and rotate. With the gear dogs, you wanna make sure this top selector, just pull up on it a little bit. And that way you're gonna be able to rotate the shafts.
And after that, we've got the output shaft assembly. Just wiggling those gears, that's gonna help everything just drop down into place. Next, we're gonna install the shift forks into the engagement dogs or gear selectors, whatever you wanna call them. Be aware of these pins on the ends of them. You want these facing that input shaft or that offset towards the input shaft. And before I have it all the way set into place, you wanna line those pins up with the shift drum. And as you insert those pins, you're gonna to have to pull up or push down on the springs and you wanna take your time while you get everything lined up and then work everything down into position. Now that we're assembled, we already did lube some of the rotating parts, but just to be safe, I'm gonna apply some assembly lube to these shift fork grooves, this chain and a few other spots, including these gears, just to make sure we're all oiled up. The next step is to apply gasket sealer to the sealing surface and you just want a thin coat. You don't want it smushing out the sides. Now we'll place the other case half into position. Just make sure you take your time and get everything lined up. After that, we're gonna install the bolts and snug them up in a crisscross pattern and then torque them to 20 foot pounds. Now that we're torqued down, the next thing we wanna do is make sure the transmission shifts through the gears. So I'm gonna go all the way counterclockwise first. I'm gonna rotate that input shaft, make sure it goes through the gears, and then I'm gonna end up by rotating the shift drum all the way clockwise until it stops. That should be our high gear. So we got neutral. Should be reverse. Going the other way, and then we've got park. and park is not rotating the shaft, so we're good. So we're gonna go back through the gears again. And there we have our high gear. So the reason we're leaving this in high gear is because we need to time our sector gears. So we've got our timing mark and we also have a missing tooth from this gear. That's gonna line up with the thicker spline on our shift drum. So I'll drop this into place. So now on the 11 tooth sector gear, this collar, this is gonna go right into our case. And we've got the two timing marks. Those need to match up with the single timing mark on the 16 tooth gear. So we've got those lined up. And then on the shift shaft, what we've got is Again, a wider spline, that's gonna line up with that gear, with the missing tooth right there. Next, we have the detent star. Again, line up that missing tooth. After that, we have the detent pawl. I'm gonna set that into place and then we need to install the compression spring and there's a little tab on the detent pawl we're gonna hook that onto. And I'm actually gonna start with the pawl up just a little bit just to make the process easier. And we'll press the pawl down into place. So after that, we've got two O-rings, one bigger one, one smaller one, smaller one obviously on the shift drum Now again, we need to uh, apply gasket maker to the ceiling surface. We're gonna install the cover and then these bolts get torqued to 12 foot pounds. Now again, since we got a new case, these threads actually aren't made yet. These bolts are self tappers. So we're gonna have to drill those in. Now we can reinstall our sensor, make sure the flat part is lined up. You also have a tab on the bottom. It's gonna go in that groove right there. 
Got a flat washer, spring washer, and an E-clip. Then we have the shift linkage arm. We're gonna install the nut on top and tighten it down. So I'm gonna get this started and this is a press fit. I'm gonna let the nut do the rest of the work. Okay. So that's gonna be 18 foot pounds. Now, some of you aren't gonna have to switch this sensor over, but we need to, again, since we have that new case. That feels good right there. Next, we need to install the snorkel shaft seal. Just so you guys can see, there's a little lip inside of here. So that lip, this metal needs to rest just barely against that. So I'm gonna slide that in place. And how we're gonna install this is use one of the old bearings that we removed from the transmission. We're gonna go set that on the outside diameter of this and just go around and tap this into place. And you could actually hear that when it's seated on that little lip inside of there, the pitch changed. Now we can install the transmission from the left side of the machine. Once you have that down into place, you're gonna to wanna to put some grease inside of the prop shaft and connect that to the transmission. After that, we need to install the mount. So we're gonna start in the back and first thing we're gonna do is start with the upper bolt. And then we've got those three bolts going through the lower section. And we're gonna leave these loose until all of these mounts are loosely installed. Now for the left front mounts, most people are just gonna have two bolts going through the side. But again, we have that SDI motor mounting plate. It's gonna help hold everything securely in place and make sure that the clutches don't come out of alignment. So we've got four bolts on this side. On the right side, we just have a nut plate that goes on the back side, and then two bolts going through the side. Now with all the transmission mounts loose, what we need to do is set the distance from the crankshaft to the transmission input shaft. So you can either use a distance tool, that's gonna to be from Polaris, or you can use the SDI alignment. That's what we're gonna be doing since we have that motor mounting plate as well. And these bars, they make sure that the shafts are parallel to each other and that they're at the correct distance. Now, if you need to know how to use these alignment bars or motor mounting plate, we have a separate video for that, so go check those out. So now that we have the distance set correctly, we're gonna start by torquing down this upper motor mount. That's gonna be 40 foot-pounds. And then the three bolts on the side going through the case, those are gonna be 20 foot-pounds. The two on the side, they're 65, but if you have this SDI plate, they're gonna be 50. Now the right mount has a torquing sequence. So the first thing we're gonna to torque is this lower bolt. That's gonna be five foot-pounds. This is number one if you're following with the manual. And then we're gonna go sequential. So number two, number three, and we've got number four and number five. We're gonna do it in that order and they're gonna to be torqued to 44 foot-pounds. And then if you have the SDI motor mounting plate, the front two bolts are actually torqued to 44 foot-pounds. Now we'll tighten these set screws. Now the next step is to connect our sensors. So we've got the speed sensor right here. We'll clip that connector into place. Make sure it's snapped all the way down. And we've got our gear position sensor. That's snapped on. We've got our breather hose, we'll put that on there. And then we've got a couple brackets that you'll remember we removed these screws or these bolts. Um, we're just gonna take those out, install the brackets and tighten them back down. After that, we'll install the cable bracket. We've got Loctite on these bolts. We're gonna torque them to 17 foot pounds. After that, we have our cable. I'm gonna slide that on. We've got a washer and our clip on the inside of that. Now I didn't change the adjustment on the cable, so I'm just gonna tighten up the jam nuts. The next step is to install the air box. When you do this, make sure the boots are all the way installed onto the throttle bodies. You also wanna make sure that intake tube is all the way on and lined up correctly. Then we're gonna tighten down those clamps. And 
And with those tightened down, we've got one bolt going through the bottom. That's gonna to be torqued to 22 foot pounds. Now, as you do this, pay attention to the routing of all the wires. We're gonna use some zip ties. We've got two on top, and then there's gonna be two places on the side that we tie these wires down. The next step is to install the inner clutch cover. Make sure you get all of your lines routed correctly in here as you do this. And then these seven bolts, we're gonna install these. We're gonna to torque them all to 12 foot pounds. Now for the clutch, you wanna make sure the taper for the drive clutch is clean. We're gonna set that in place and we're gonna to torque the bolt to 96 foot-pounds. We'll apply a little grease to the driven clutch shaft and put the driven clutch onto it. The driven clutch gets torqued to 55 foot-pounds. Once those on, we're going to install our belt. You want to spin this driven clutch six or seven times. And just make sure the belt works all the way out and that way it's not like you're starting in a high gear. Then the clutch cover. After that, we're going to make sure the prop shaft is all the way on. Then we'll apply some anti-seize and use the axle like it's a slide hammer to pop it into the transmission case. Now we can install the lower shock mounting bolt. That's gonna to get torqued to 70 foot-pounds. After that, we have the upper radius rod bolt. Then you want to install the caliper all the way. We're going to torque both of those bolts to 40 foot-pounds. After that, we can install the lower radius rod bolt. Now, both of the radius rod bolts, they're going to be torqued to 50 foot-pounds on our machine and then turned an additional 90 degrees. But this can vary from machine to machine, so make sure you check your manual. After that, you can install the link arm bolt and torque it to 40 foot-pounds. Once you have all that done, you wanna do the same steps on the other side. From here, it's mostly just reinstalling plastics. So we're gonna start with the cargo bed. We'll get all those fasteners in place. Then we'll do the rear section of our roll cage. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to reconnect your battery. Make sure the prop shaft is in the correct position. And then these bolts going into the support bearing mount are gonna to be torqued to 35 foot-pounds. Reconnect your 12-volt outlet and install the center consoles. We'll reinstall our seats. And then our tires. And with the tires, you wanna make sure you torque these. Don't forget to reinstall the drain plug and torque it to 14 foot-pounds. Next, we need to fill the transmission with fluid. So our machine takes 1300 milliliters. And if you need to make sure you're getting the right stuff for your machine, we do have oil change kits on our website, so go check that out. This can vary from machine to machine, so just double check that on yours. Install the fill plug and torque it to 14 foot-pounds. 
And that's all there is to rebuilding the transmission on your Polaris side-by-side. -side. We wanna change this oil out after about 25 hours or 250 miles. It wouldn't hurt to do it a little sooner than that, but that's gonna be your braking interval. Then just follow the regular intervals after that. So with that being said, if you guys have any questions about the rebuild process, leave those down in the comments below. Now, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you need any parts for your side-by-side, -side, you can pick those up on our website. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.